okay very good afternoon to everybody uh, we will start today's session uh, yesterday we had started with the topic arrays in c and we have seen one dimensional array yesterday how to create a one dimensional array array is nothing but a collection of variables of same type it's a collection of variables of same type and we want to create a group of variables to store a large amount of data reasonably large amount of data we want to create a collection of variables or a group of variables so instead of creating many individual variables we create an array now this means an array with the name a is created with the five elements so this in square bracket five means how many elements are there in that array or how many integer values we can store in that array and the first variable in that array is at zero index zero a in square bracket zero we access get the first variable in that array we can put some value in that and the last variable in that array a four index value four so even though size of the array is five the legal index values for each of this element is starting from zero up to size minus one so here 5 minus 1 4 4 is the last legal location we can legal variable we can access okay if we try to access a of 5 it will result in unexpected results sometimes it may be storing the value sometimes it will create another so it's better not venturing to access the sixth element of the array a of a5 is the sixth element of the array where the maximum size of the array is 5 so this much only you should legally access so these are one dimensional arrays actually it's used for storing a sequence of linear sequence of data linear sequence of numbers okay even though i'm representing it vertically we can represent it horizontally also it's a one dimensional array a one one linear sequence okay now against this there is something called two dimensional array if you have data in the form of a table best example is a matrix in mathematics in a matrix in mathematics normally the basic matrix is two dimension right rows are there one dimension and columns are there so it will be like a table rows and columns for such data we have two dimensional array also so whatever we have created so far is one dimensional array only one dimension linear sequence of data it can be numbers or can be characters floating point numbers integers etc then yesterday we saw the program how to get how to create an array then how to read the elements from the user into the array if we want to manually initialize if we know the numbers within the program we can do this way but this is not feasible if 100 number elements are there in the array we cannot initialize all of them manually such a program will not be of much help what will be of better help will is that we are taking the data from the user and that is what we have done here so we get ask the user we create an array of size 20 assuming that the user is going to enter at most 20 numbers at most maximum it can be 10 it can be 5 it can be 13 but not more than 20 that is my assumption because of that I created an array of maximum size 20 and then we are asking the user how many numbers actually he wants to enter so sometimes one time you are executing the program you may want to store 5 numbers and process it sometimes you may want to store 10 numbers sometimes you may want to store 20 numbers so up to 20 numbers you can accommodate in this array so you ask the user to enter how many numbers he wants to enter once we get this value the actual number of numbers he wants to enter number of data he wants to enter we are starting a loop with that for i is equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and this is the index variable for the array okay now when the user enters first data i am going to store it in num 0 initially i is equal to 0 num 0 then i equal to 1 num 1 i is equal to 2 in each location of the array up to index value n minus 1 I am going to store the element 0 to n minus 1 makes it total n index values 
and we store the elements starting from index 0 to index n minus 1. That is why I am putting i less than n rather than putting i less than or equal to n. When i equal to n, I should not store. So the maximum value of i should be n minus 1 for which this loop body will be executed. If i gets the value n, n less than n is false and we will not scan the variable anymore. That is what is happening. So we will uh, we had executed this deep in a debug mode and to see uh, what happens. So in watch watches you can see the so it is asking for n the value of n. Assume that we are entering five. So nums array is here. Some random values are there and 19 is the maximum size, the maximum index value. Size of the array is 20 starting from 0 to 19. That means 20 elements. Index values range from 0 to 19. From, uh, some random values are there. Now if I start entering numbers, say first number I am entering, I am going to enter 100 or 199. So in 0, num 0, I get 199. Similarly, other numbers also will be, whatever numbers I am entering, all those will be. Gets. So here, see, here I have a very, uh, very, really random number, some 41, 9, 99, 68. Okay. So when we are, when I am entering 5 numbers, here it will be entered, first number, second number will go here, in that index 1, third number, fourth number, fifth number. So I will, put a breakpoint here and I'll put continue debug continue so here I can now I can enter all the other values last number is for 55 that will make total 5 numbers so all of them are read and all of them are stored I am not executing step by step I am executing till next to breakpoint I put another breakpoint here so everything from this, after this breakpoint, till this breakpoint, everything is executed. So all the five numbers I entered are stored in the array now. Nums is the array, this array, and I am able to see the visualization of the memory. Now this is the input process. So since each element is a variable, when we are scanning, we are applying ampersand. Just like normal variable x or n, what we do here, ampersand n. So nums of i is one element or one variable of that array of variables and we are using ampersand. Okay. Now what next? We stored all the elements from the user and now what we need to do is we need to process that data. So a normal cycle will be you ask the user how many you create an array of uh, sufficient size assuming the maximum number of numbers user is going to enter then you ask the user how many numbers he wants to really enter and then using a loop you take all these numbers in and store it in the array so taking the input read, reading the input so creating the array reading the array elements into the now reading the data into the array and storing in the array then processing the data and create an output then display the data. That's what a typical cycle. Get the numbers, process the numbers, generate the output, display the output. Now displaying the after processing the numbers, the result may be a single value sometimes. For example, I want to find the sum of the elements in the array. So the result is a single value, the sum of the elements. Sometimes it may be a modified array. Suppose you are modifying all the elements in the array, sometimes it may be a modified array. In case of single value, you will display the sum, say sum of the elements in the array, you will display the sum, single integer. But if you want to display a modified array, you created by processing the input array. If you want to display a modified array, you will require a similar loop. Because each element, there is no mechanism to or function to display the entire array in C. So what we need to do is, similar fashion, how you are reading the elements, 
each data item and storing it in the array similar fashion you will have to display so for that what you need to do is similar i am just copying it for i is equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus you take up by this loop what i am doing i am taking each element in the array using the index variable index variable will get the value 0 that time i am accessing the first element in the array then 1 i am accessing the second element in the array so what i will do here is instead of scanf i am going to print when i am printing the variable value of a variable i don't need to put ampersand so this is the way to display the content of the array if you want to display the content of the array the elements are okay now we are taking the input assuming that we modified the array using some computation and then finally we want to display the array here in this case i am we are not doing any processing so we will leave that but just to understand that displaying the elements in the array what is the difference from the loop which uh, which is used for reading the elements from the user what is the difference the only difference is instead of scanf you use printf since when you are printing variables you don't need to put ampersand so instead of ampersand numsi here i am putting simply numsi here okay so if I execute this program, what is that we are going to get? I am not putting it in debug mode now. It takes time, more time. So I want to enter five numbers. I will enter five numbers at, at once. Okay, five numbers are there. And the elements are. So the second loop is displaying. So this loop is used for reading the elements I entered here. Then for displaying, I am using the second loop, the only one statement, what is the body of the uh, loop, which consists of only one statement, that is change it, changed. Instead of scan of it is print of. Now there is a problem, there is the, between the individual elements, there is no space. How do I get that? After this percentage, I can put a space in print of. After, this is going to print one element. In one iteration of the loop, I am going to print only one element. What if immediately after that I put a space also? In printf, I, I can put space. Now, if I do that, how will the output change? Okay. So, again, maybe six elements now. One, two, three, four. Six elements. So I get a space between the elements. So it looks nice. It will not be treated as one number. This will be treated as seven different numbers. Okay. Now taking the input into a one dimensional array is covered by this. Displaying the output. Output elements stored in a one dimensional array is done. But what is more important is not done. That is processing the data. Okay, so we need to put that also. Normally, your pattern will be like this. Now, since I am displaying an array as the output, what I will do is I will change every element in the array. Every element in the array. To access every element in the array, again, one way is you use num0, num1, num3, etc. But it is tedious. If your array size, the number of elements is 100, you cannot, it is very difficult to put num0, num1. Next time the number of elements are different, it is difficult. So, an easier way is, again, put a loop for processing the data also. So, this is the mechanism for accessing every element. Once you have this, you apply nums i, you get that element. Here, we are, that is what we are doing. In this loop, numsi get me each element in the array based on the value of i. When it is 0, I get the first element in the array. When it is 1, I get the second element of the array until the last element when i is equal to n minus 1. The largest legal index value 
will be n minus 1 because my, my total number of elements are n. Okay. Now if I want to process some sort of processing I want to. So what I am going to do is a simple processing I am doing. I am just doubling. Doubling the number stored in that. So for that what I can do is doubling means 2 into num psi. Now this is an expression where LHS equal to RHS. I have already always told that the complete LHS will be done and the result will be stored into the RHS. Now RHS is num psi. When i is equal to 0, it refers to the first element. And LHS, will, uh, LHS is this. RHS is this. Now this will be computed first. Suppose the first element in the array is 5. I will do 2 into 5, 10. That 10 will be again assigned to num0. That means the initially initial value 5 which was the, there in the location uh, in the element num0 that will be overwritten by 10 now. So initially if it was 5 now it becomes 2 into 5 it is as good as putting num0 is equal to 10. Okay. So my processing is this much only. I am just doubling each element. Each element, every element in the array, I just want to double and store it back in the same location. That is what is achieved using this statement. So I am doing some minimal processing now. So I should be changing it to i. Otherwise every time it will over, overwrite on to first element instead of that the corresponding element if I am taking nums3 it should be written into nums3 only the new value should be written into nums3 only ok now if I run this five inputs say so 1 2 3 4 5 6 what is the output you are expecting what will be the output Hmm? That will be the output. Anyone? What is that we are doing here? We are simply doubling each element and storing into the same location in the array. Nobody is there? Are you there? Are you there guys or it is disconnected? Yes sir. Okay. So I get the new array which is made of the doubled elements. 1 has become 2, 2 has become 4, 3 has become 6, 4 has become 8, 6 has become 12. So every element in the array we modified and stored into the same location. Now if you want to see this step by step, we'll ju I'll just do that. I'll leave everything else. Only put breakpoint here. So you put breakpoint where you want to stop the program first time. So until this point everything will be executed in one stretch. Then at breakpoint it will stop. Then onwards we can run it step by step. That is the procedure. So I will just put breakpoint there. Okay. So I will put say 5 again. Enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now it has stopped execution here at this point of time because I have a breakpoint there. We will see how it is changing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is stored here. So as I keep on executing step by step, see, instead of 1, it has become 2. Now 2 is there, it should become 4. Then 3 is there, it should become 6. 4 is there, it should become 8. 5 is there, it should become 10. Double, exactly double. Now we have reached the last element. i less than 5 is given. 4 less than 5 was true. Now i has become, what is the value of i? 4. 4 less than 4 is, no, 4 less than 5 is also true, right? Or, no. Yeah, in increment happened here. It was incremented to 5 here. 
then the condition was checked so it was 5 less than 5 5 less than 5 false we came out and we are printing each element in the array now it has become the same array the values have become double of the existing elements that's what has happened okay here we will continue and stop the program the result will be the number of elements uh, the doubled array doubled array is it clear so this is the complete cycle of complete cycle of taking input into a one dimensional array then processing the data and displaying the result resultant matrix or resultant array so this is not a matrix this is an array any doubt in this program any doubt in this program otherwise we will make this as the next assignment so this general pattern is you are going to use this general pattern for almost all the programs involved involving uh, one dimensional arrays okay so this will be your next assignment for 12 1d array demo 1d array demo so you can take a snapshot of this this involves everything the complete cycle getting the value of n creating the array getting the value of n taking the input into the array processing the array elements displaying the modified array okay any question is there you can ask me now now many times you may not be modifying all the elements in the array instead of that you will be using the data stored in the array to generate a single value assume that we have a program to find the sum of all the numbers entered by the user again sum of a random sequence of numbers previously we had sum of 1 to n now we will have sum of whatever numbers ended by the user sum of n numbers ended by the user it may be any, any, any random number so i created a variable sum equal to 0 initialized to 0 this initialization is important here otherwise you will get a wrong answer so what i will change is in the processing part i will put it as sum equal to sum plus num psi num psi when i put like this for i is equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and within the body if i put num psi i am getting every element of the array in one iteration one element next extra iteration next element and i am cumulatively adding into it into some variable initially sum is 0 so 0 will be added to first number and the result will be stored into sum itself if it was not 0 my result will be biased by whatever number I am putting here. Initial value will be 14. So first time it will become 14 plus first element num0. To avoid that I am putting initial value as 0. So initializing the variable is critical here in this case. Because before assigning the value we are using it here in an expressions RHS side. Since I am using it in the RHS side before initializing or assigning any value to that be, uh, before this it should I, I should be in initializing it with zero hope you understood the problem of not initializing this variable here if you did not understand just let me know now sum is equal to sum plus num psi and finally now when i am displaying i can change it to the sum is sum is percentage d followed by sum so from previous case the only difference is that output is a single digit single number rather than the entire array when we had doubling element of each 
each element of the array we wanted to display the modified array itself for that we use the loop and access every element and display it similar to this but only print of statement was different scan of instead of scanner we had print here the result is a single number so what we are doing we can simply print that single number no need of loop so how how is it going to execute so five numbers 10 20 30 40 50 sum is 150 okay fine another way of doing processing the numbers in the array and getting one single output okay previously the output was the entire array itself but modif elements in the array were modified by multiplying with 2 on each element each element multiplied by 2 clear okay now uh, this is fine understood this program any doubt okay assuming that there is no doubt I am going to slightly modify this program here the processing part is only one single statement what if my problem is counting all the even numbers in the array or counting all the even numbers in the input set of numbers what we should do this part is same how many numbers we ask the user then we get all the numbers here that also remains same in the processing part we need to make some change finding all the of not finding all the counting the number of even numbers counting the number of even numbers can anyone suggest a logic for that anyway i have to access every element in the array and check whether it is an even number if it is an even number i need to keep a counter and increase the number of every time i get an even number i need to increase the value of the counter that is what is required how do I achieve that? Can anyone suggest it? No, I don't need a sum. So what I do is I have a, I create another variable, meaningful variable name count. So initially count is zero means I have not encountered any element. Now in the loop, I have to check for every value of i, I have to check I have I get one element of the array. When i is equal to zero, I get first element of the array nums i i get the first element of the array when i is equal to 0 i is equal to 1 i get the second element of the array so what i should check whether it is an even number of or not it is an even number or not so how can i check whether it is an even number or not when do you say a number is even number a number is even number if it is divisible by 2. If it is divisible by 2. So what I check is the remainder of the division operation. I apply modulus operation with 2. If the remainder is 0, so this is the first number, say, say 10. 10 mod 2. Num i, if first number is 10, 10 mode 2, the remainder will be 0 only if 10 is even. So 10 mode 2 is, the 10 by 2, the remainder is 0, we know. So if the number is an even number, the remainder will be 0. So I check if the remainder of the division of that number with the 2, whether it is 0 or not. The remainder, to get the remainder, we are applying modulus operator or remainder operator. So we get the remainder. Now if that is true, what I will do? I will increment the value of count. I will increment the value of count. Hmm. 
done now whichever element i am picking every element i am from the array i am going to pick whichever element i am picking if it is an even number then only counter will be incremented otherwise this statement will not be executed we will go to the next iteration of the loop so this is going to get me the count of all even numbers convinced there is a compilation error nums actually it should be nums we array name is nums okay convinced any any doubt if not i am going to enter eight numbers no even numbers ah, only one even number has come four exactly eight numbers eight numbers are there and out of that only two are even numbers 6 and 10 so did you understand how have i have obtained the number of even numbers i have an if condition if the number is i get every number element in the array if it is an even number i am increasing the counter even number how if it is an even number i am checking using the remainder operator so when i find the remainder of division num i with 2 if it is zero i conclude that it is an even number and i count, increase the count of even numbers okay since it is only one statement for this if statement i am not using curly bracket separately if it was there was there were more than one statements then i should have used curly bracket for the if statement since it is not there you know this only one statement is there any doubt guys you ask some doubts otherwise i feel like you are not there the attendance is already low any anyway, i'll track the number of attendance and take necessary action when the time comes so is it clear so um, what if i want to find the odd numbers number of odd numbers what should i do someone tell me if i want to find the number of odd numbers in the set of numbers what should i do anyone hmm you are not audible sir if it is odd number then the remainder should come as one yeah so by changing only this statement i will get the number of odd numbers so if i execute this again 6 number of odd numbers are 3 here okay so uh, we have some a few lag programs also either the pattern will be the first program's pattern the output will be a modified array or it will be a single digit so we have seen both the cases and this i will give us the next assignment equal to 0 next assignment question finding the count of even numbers what if i want to count both uh, uh, like i want to find out the number of even numbers as well as odd numbers i can use two counters right i can use two counters the count even and count odd initialized to zero if this is the case i will increment count even and else i will put an else play else close also else increase increment count odd and finally you print the values of count even and count odd variables small small changes but can you use and operator uh, in the uh, that if statement 
wherein you have written nums i percentage oh. to equal to equal to and then you write and and again you can yeah you uh, can write you can write actually if it if your task requires that logic you can write this is just a one relational expression okay if you want to write one more so in that case if both conditions are, are true then only it will it depends on the logic okay in this case we don't need to put and but sir both case in the sense how does it uh, approve it sir like it will be uh, true right sir because we need to check uh, odd and even both right hey, odd and even in that case we are going to increase separate variables right different variables so there we we don't need to use and or it is not required i will use so if this is not true if it is not even then there is only one possibility it will be odd so you don't check anything you increment the value of the second variable okay so if it is count e i am incrementing count e i will have another variable count odd count o okay equal to zero so this case i will increment count o there are different ways of achieving the same so this is one way now in count d e, i will have the count of even numbers in count o i will have the odd numbers okay here achieving the same with and operation is difficult actually if i am I'm putting and i actually i can put or operation but every time count even and count of both will be incremented i need to discriminate even and odd numbers right so if it is even execute some statement if it is odd execute some other statement so this is the way to find the count of even and odd numbers so i'll just execute it so that we will make sure that it is uh, running fine so that we will take this as the program for uh assignment okay i did not compile the program okay i am not printing the other value so even numbers Okay. Looks fine. Two seven and two three four six. So even numbers are three. Odd numbers are four. We get the number of even numbers as well as odd numbers. Okay. So you can take this as the next assignment question. and the number of even and odd numbers i also need to keep track what all are questions i am giving you as assignment so i am keeping it is saving it to a separate file Okay, if you want, you can take a screenshot of this, or you can try to write, try to do it yourself. There are different ways of doing it. Just one way I'm showing. So that much we will discuss about one-dimensional array. Then we have to slowly move on to two-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional arrays. so one dimensional array is a linear sequence graphically we can visualize it as a linear sequence of numbers okay so there is a one dimensional array each indexing so it's about character arrays we'll come to this little later so we'll go to the two dimensional arrays so one dimensional arrays are 
used for storing sequence of numbers or linear sequence of numbers list of numbers characters etc if we want to store data in the form of a matrix we need a two dimensional array and this is the general syntax for creating a two dimensional array basically we have two indexing levels this is for first dimension this is for the second dimension or here we store data as a column row column manner this many rows this many columns and the first indexing is used to represent the number of rows and the second indexing in square bracket that is used for representing the number of columns a typical example is here this creates a two dimensional array of three rows and four columns three rows and four columns previously we had one dimensional array we simply specified the total number of elements because it was a linear sequence it was not a tabular form it was a linear sequence total number of elements was sufficient now we are just separating rows and columns how many rows are there how many columns are there okay three rows and three columns so if to visualize that this is the way to visualize this i am creating an integer two dimensional array of integers the name is a okay so that means three rows are there four columns are there if i put graphically this is the two dimensional array what you find in black and with white font this is the two dimensional array and the arrays uh, rows are indexed from similar to one dimensional array here rows are indexed from 0 up to size minus 1 if size row size is 3 the last indexing index value of the row is 2 so up 0 1 2 3 rows then horizontally i have columns here i have four columns so indexing is from 0 up to 3 0 1 2 3 now in one dimensional array using one index variable i may and by changing the value of that index variable i i was able to access every element in the array but in case of two dimensional array i have two dimensions that means i need two indexing variables one for the row one for the column okay now each element for each element the indexing values what they are for the first element in first row 0 column 0 the indexing value 0 0 and this is how i access the first element a 0 0 0 0 in square bracket now in the first row that means row 0 if i want to access the second element or element in the column 1 0 1 a 0 1 a 0 2 a 0 3 after that in this next row so in this current row 0 i have accessed each element using 0 0 0 1 0 2 and 0 3 now if i go to next row row index is 1 column index is 0 so first element in the second row i access using 1 0 second element in the second row 1 1 1 2 1 3 then again 2 0 2 1 2 2 2 3 this is how we access the elements in the two dimensional array this is how we create it we access the elements using this now i am using constants here instead of that we can use index variables also if you want to apply a loop and access every element in the array i will use one indexing variable for rows another indexing variable for zeros normally we give the name i and j so far we have seen since it was they were only one dimensional array i used i there is no mandatory requirement i have to use i only but as a convention i use it so that I, it is easy for me to understand and implement since two dimensions are there i will use j for the column indexing so i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 this is the element a i j will refer to this element when j is equal to 1 but i remains 0 this is the element i access when j is equal to 2 and i is 2 this is the element i access column 3 row, row 3 column 3 i is equal to 2 j is equal to 2 last element i is equal 
to j is equal to 3. I can I need to use two variables for the indexing. So compile time initialization, if I know all the values, I can initialize this way. So what are the total, how, what, are the, what is the total number of elements or total possible number of elements in the array? Row into 3, tot, maximum number of rows into number of columns. I can store up to 12 elements in this two dimensional array. In such a way that 3 rows are there and 4 columns are there. 3 into 4, 12 ele elements I can store in the array. So compile time initialization, that means if I know the elements when I am doing the program, I can initialize it this way. The memory, the storage will be like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3 here. Again next to 3 here. 3, 4, 5, 6. Then 6, 7. 6, 7, 8, 9 will go into the third row. This is the initialization. Okay. If I want to specify row wise, this is just an alternate way of doing it. Okay, this is one way of doing it. But we want to be more clear about what goes into a row to improve the readability of the program. Maybe we can put it in this way also. This is one row. Elements of the second row, third row. This way also we can put. Or for better readability, I can put in multi different lines also. Previously also same thing I have given. But the second row, I put it in a different row here, a different line here, second row. This is also possible. Still, the array will be initialized as this way, two dimensional array. If I skip some elements in the, here four elements are there, here four elements are there. If I skip some elements, it will be automatically filled with zeros. Okay. So if I skip some elements in between rows, in between rows, there also remaining elements will be filled with zeros. Here only two elements are there, goes here and remaining zeros. Here only one element is there, remaining will be automatically filled to zero. Here only two. These are different ways of compile time initialization. But what we are interested is more, more practically more useful is runtime initialization. We will see it in the next class. Lab will be there as usual at 2.30. You can join back at 2.30. Thank you. We will continue in the next class.